This is a video about generating electricity from chickens. Parts. Some information about this. Chicken eggshells are made of calcium carbonate. There's a couple other minor things in there like magnesium carbonate, but it's mostly calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate can be heated to form calcium oxide. Now, you could use something like chalk for this. Chalk that we buy nowadays for schools and sidewalk chalk is not made of calcium carbonate anymore. It's mostly made of gypsum, which is calcium sulfate. So you, it's very hard to find true calcium carbonate chalk. And if you can, it's actually rather expensive. Another name for calcium oxide is quicklime. Calcium carbonate can't be burned as it's already in its highest oxidation state. If we look at the reaction here, we have calcium carbonate with a lot of heat, about 840 degrees Celsius, which is 1,544 degrees Fahrenheit. It will turn into calcium oxide by releasing the carbon dioxide in there. Hopefully propane torches get to this temperature, so that's what I'm gonna use in order to heat the calcium carbonate that came from the chicken eggshells. And the way we're gonna get electricity from this chicken eggshell thing is we're gonna take the calcium oxide that was formed over here, and when you add water to it, you get calcium hydroxide, but it's a very exothermic and it produces a lot of heat. About 300 degrees Celsius or 572 degrees Fahrenheit. The heat that's being generated here that we're going to use to generate the electricity. For our materials here, we have calcium oxide, which we're going to make, water, and here's something new, a Peltier device. And we're going to go over this a little bit more and an electric motor just to prove that we're actually producing electricity. Let's talk more about this Peltier device. Let's talk some more about this Peltier device. I have one right here. Of course, you'll see this several times during this video. It's simply two white plates here with a couple wires coming out of it, and it really looks rather unassuming. In spite of that, there's actually a lot going on in there. So the two plates are made of ceramic, and the two wires are obvious. And in the middle here, sandwiched between those two ceramic plates, are semiconductors. And they're labeled P for positive and N for negative. And those, each semiconductor can, contains a different number of electrons. The N contains more. So if you just look at how this goes, you're going to from a high number of electrons to a low number to a high, and they're made that way. And then they're sandwiched between these two plates here. In addition, these little semiconductor pods, as you might call them, are spread throughout between these two ceramic discs here. When a DC voltage is put across the semiconductor's P and N, it creates a temperature difference. So essentially, when you turn the power on, and the power is going into this unit here, electrons are going to start to jump from low to high, but then from high to low, and so on and so forth, across this whole thing and throughout it. When that happens, it's creating heat, as it does. Electrons moving through a wire creates heat. We know that very well. However, because there's a different number of electrons in each one of these little pods, the heat is carried by the negative, the dark ones here, faster to one plate than the positive ones are. So in essence, one plate is getting a flow of heated electrons heading toward it in a rapid rate, whereas the other ones are not moving as quickly. We have electrons flowing this way, and then we have electrons flowing this way. As these electrons move through the device, heat is absorbed from the cold side, and it's actually moved to the hot side. So Considering the previous explanation, as these electrons carry the heat to one side faster, that side's going to get hot. When you run a current in here, the side gets hot because heat's being removed from this side up to that side. So there becomes a hot side and a cold side just by putting power or current into the device. Room temperature, this device is going to reach equilibrium where the hot's not going to get any hotter and the cold is not going to get any colder. However, if you set up a fan and start removing heat from the hot side, the cold side can get much, much colder. If you happen to own a refrigerator that goes inside your car that runs on a, the 12 volts from the car battery, typically it's these Peltier devices that are making that process work and keeping the refrigerator, the inside of it, cold. And sometimes they'll have a fan situated such that air is blowing across the hot side, removing the heat here, allowing this to get colder and keeping your goods fresh. Coming back to what we're actually doing in the experiment, I may have a small cup here that will contain the calcium oxide and uh, we'll be putting the water on there, creating heat on the hot side. And down here, I'll have a heat sink. So by keeping this side cold and this side warm, we're reversing this whole process and we're shooting electrons out of it, which of course is current. And um, that's how we're gonna create current from calcium oxide that came from burned calcium carbonate that came from eggshells. Quickly, this does have limitations. If you put these plates too close together, they do interfere with each other, 
And if they're separated too much, the current that goes into here starts to create its own heat, which prevents the easy transfer of heat from one side to the other. So these are really made pretty optimally between these ceramic plates, about the best distance you can come up with. And since we're talking about exothermic reactions in this process right here i wanted to go over some other exothermic reactions which i will perform during this video just it's important to note that none of these equations here are balanced properly first one's really well known potassium permanganate and glycerin yields heat potassium carbonate manganese 3 oxide carbon dioxide and water the second one is manganese dioxide which you can actually get from old uh, standard batteries um, and hydrogen peroxide which yields heat manganese 2 oxide, oxygen, and water. The third one is calcium hypochlorite, which is actually a form of solid pool chlorinator, plus brake fluid. Now, brake fluid is polyethylene glycol. This particular representation, this formula, formula only has one ethylene molecule, so it's not completely accurate, but we're going to use it for this reaction because it works. So we mix our calcium hypochlorite with our polyethylene glycol. We get heat, calcium chloride, C2H4, which is ethylene, chlorine gas, carbon dioxide, and water. The last reaction is what we're doing, calcium oxide and water, which yields heat, calcium hydroxide, and carbon dioxide. To get the most amount of heat as we can out of this last reaction here, we end up with the stoichiometric measurement of one milliliter of water to every 3.18 grams of calcium oxide. When I got done heating the eggshell dust, I ended up with 7.87 grams of calcium oxide. So if we now divide that by the 3.18 grams per milliliter, as is mentioned here, the grams cancel out and we get 2.47 milliliters, which is essentially two and a half milliliters of water. So that's what I'll be adding to the calcium oxide when we actually do this experiment. I really hope I did an okay job explaining this all here and that you're not confused. But at this point, we're going to go back to the black slate. To understand a Peltier device better, let's talk about our methods here. So we have a little cup up here with the calcium oxide that we're making. And then the Peltier device is going to be sandwiched in the middle here. And there's going to be a heat sink down here. And again, the top of the uh, Peltier device here is going to be the hot side if you ran electricity into it. And on the bottom is going to be the cold side. So by producing cold on the bottom and heat on the top, it's going to generate its own electricity. There's nothing really hard about this. There's just a bunch of little parts that need to be completed. So let's get at it. In this experiment, here are the main players. I have some chopped up eggshells here, which I have plenty of from a previous experiment. A tiny motor with a propeller, and this unique thing right here called a Peltier device. To get the best reaction when we convert our eggshells to calcium oxide or quick lime, I'm going to have to chop these up a lot more. Good old mortar and pestle. Well, I'm about halfway there. After some vigorous exercise here, I'm finally done with this. So here's some finely chopped eggshells. And I'm doing this just to make sure I can heat the powder uh, evenly as we want to convert all of this to calcium oxide. So I'm going to use a propane torch. It's definitely hot enough to do that. And we'll convert this from calcium carbonate to calcium oxide. All right. That white that's forming is calcium oxide. This is going to take a bit. I'll be back when I'm done. I've been working on this for about a half hour, and I think we're done. The color is getting no whiter, and I believe we've driven off all the carbon dioxide. So there are some impurities in eggshells, very small amounts. Uh, and... Uh, so those might still be in here, but there's plenty of calcium oxide to, to perform the experiment. This is what we just got done making, which is almost 100% pure calcium oxide. It's almost perfectly white. On this side, there's um, some calcium oxide, but it looks pretty bad. There's some dark spots in there, which I think are just burnt eggshells that didn't completely convert. I'm going to show you a close-up here of this so you can see the difference. And um, surprisingly, when I tried this, it actually worked and I'm going to show you that. Before I do that I just want to confirm that everything's relatively cool, 65 degrees, the pile should be about the same. Yep, 65 degrees. 
So that's our starting point. Next, I'm going to drip some distilled water on this, which we're now converting any calcium oxide to calcium hydroxide, and you can already see the steam coming off of it. Before we do the experiment, I wanted to show you the Peltier device we're going to be using close up here, and you can actually see the PNN semiconductors in there, and the temperature differences are created between the junctions of each block, as was talked about. So we need to keep the cold side cold during the experiment while we heat the heat hot side up here to create current coming out of these wires instead of going in. So this is a heat diffuser from a huge electronic piece and I'm just going to set it on there, probably run a small fan to keep this cool and then we're going to put our calcium oxide on top here with our water and create current. This device here is just a voltage generator but I want to show you with current going into the Peltier device how amazingly it can work. So with the three volts, let's check and we got like 71 degrees 72 compared to the metal which is 62 so it's already started to heat up I'm gonna now go up to about 6 volts if you ever buy one of those fridges you can plug into your car usually it's a Peltier device inside of it that's making it cold and usually there's a fan running blowing hot air out somewhere alright so now it's up to 6 volts 105 110 first exothermic reaction here is potassium permanganate and glycerin. It's as old as rocks. I first did this in chemistry class. I was probably in ninth grade. This exothermic reaction is fast, and it's the magnesium dioxide, and what I have here is 18% hydrogen peroxide. And it's a mess. I'm going to add some more. I think there's some unreacted there. Sure is. Look at these bubbles on bubbles. That's really unique. And now we have calcium hypochlorite and polyethylene glycol brake fluid. It's always this dot three. It can be synthetic or regular, but both of them work. I'm going to transfer the calcium oxide from this taller container to this flatter container here just because I want the uh, heat spread out over an area rather than just confined to the bottom of this. Here's the final setup for the experiment. I have the calcium oxide here in this little pan, the Peltier device below it, and below that I'll have the heat sink. I just don't have it there now. I have this paper toweling because this stuff tends to spurt and pop. And then the ends of the Peltier device just run up to this little motor with a fan so that we will know when we are producing electricity. We're all set up here with the heat sink. Put the calcium oxide up here, like so. And then I'm going to add some 
water, ten half milliliters, which really didn't look like enough. I'm going to add a tiny bit. Well, it is enough. Look at the prop go. There you go. We went from eggshells to calcium oxide, and now we're creating calcium hydroxide. It's really spinning. Good. Yeah. Let's take the heat off here. Of course it stops. <laughs>